Glory be to God in the highest. We give glory, honor, and adoration to God Almighty for sparing our life till today. And today being day 42 of our program tagged When Mercy Speaks. And as you listen to me, I pray Mercy will speak in your life, in your business, in your home, in your endeavor. Mercy will speak in the mighty name of Jesus. And as you listen to me today, our topic is traveling in prayer. Traveling in prayers. And this is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 39 to 44. Prayer is a very important thing in our life. Prayer is the master key. And prayer, when the Lord Jesus Christ went with his disciples, according to this uh, lesson, he went with his disciples onto Mount Olive. And when he went to them, the Bible says, as he used to do. That means the Lord Jesus Christ is used to prayer. And also we, as his disciples, we must also be used to prayers. What I mean is that prayer must be part of us. Prayer must be, must be what we normally do. Prayer must be our life. Our life must be prayer. A life without prayer is a life in crisis. So on this, I hereby tell every one of us that as Christians and as followers of Christ, we must all make sure that prayer is our guide. Prayer is what we do every time. It is not a seasonal thing, but it is what we must do and continue to do. It is what we must, is what we must do. It's what we must do in our home, in our family, everywhere we are. And whatever we are doing, prayer must always be part and parcel of us. If you look at that book very well, Luke chapter 22 and in verse 39, he said, and Jesus went with his disciples unto Mount Olive, and as the Lord Jesus Christ used to do. Secondly, there is a lesson we need to learn from this. When the Lord Jesus Christ went to Mount Olive, the Bible says he was praying, and he, told, he also told his disciples that they should also be praying. That is, as disciples of Christ, we must copy or emulate what our, masters, our, our master does. This is, the, this, this is an attribute of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is his act. His act is prayer. He prays every time, and we also, as his followers, we must also know that if we want to be a follower of Christ, we want to be a real follower of Christ, one thing that must, we must do and that we need to do is that we must also pray like Jesus also prays. So if anything contrary to that, that means we are, we are, we are not a good follower. And if we follow the master and we know that uh, we need him and we know that we are for him and he is for us, we must also try as much as possible to do what he does. So now he said they should stay. And when he left them there, he said they should be praying. We also need to be praying. Either we are in the church or not in the church, wherever we are, wherever we find ourselves, we must be praying. This is an instruction from the master. He said they should be praying, that he is coming. And when he also went, he was also praying there. Jesus was praying ceaselessly. He was praying seriously. And there is another lesson we need to learn in uh, uh, verse um, 40, I think 43 of this verse. He said, and Jesus was praying that if this cup should pass me, this, if this cup should be taken away from me, and now, when you look at it very well, he later says, well, let thy will be done. That is, whenever we pray, we must be able to know that we pray according to the will of God. Because whatever we want to pray for, it must be in accordance with the will of God. Jesus also prayed and he said, let the will of God be done. That, that means ever since we have been praying, we might have, we have, we might have, might have not received results based on that we, it, is for, it is for our own self-centeredness or for our own self-benefits, not for the will of God. And as Christians, what we need doing is that we must pray concerning the will of God in our life. We must pray concerning the will of God in our business. What is God saying about your business? What is the will of God on, uh, uh, concerning your business? That matters a lot. That is when your prayer on your business can be answered. Secondly, what is the will of God concerning your family? A family of Christ, what, do, what did God want for your family? What kind of prayer did you pray as a family man? What kind of prayer did you pray as a family together? So is, is, that, prayer, is, is that prayer based on the will of God? 
you need to examine that very well. You need to look at that critically. That is, when a family comes together and they pray and they see results, that means, yes, their, their, their prayer is based on the will of God. But if your prayer is not based on the will of God, if that family prayer is just, that, is just for what they want or what they need or what will benefit them, uh, it, uh, such a prayer might have not received, might not receive good result. So therefore, as family, we must pray and then we must make sure that we pray to what God wants for us. And at the same time, again, we need to pray when we are praying concerning our work. What do you want God, what is the will of God for that work you are doing? That's your business. What is the will of God for your business? That thing you laid your hand upon, what is the will of God for it? These are areas where we make mistakes. These are areas where we think, where we, we are, after all, I've been praying for many years. I've been praying for uh, quite a lot of times. I've been into vigil. I've been in this. I've been in that. And is it, are you, all those things you are doing, is it according to the will of God? The Lord Jesus Christ says, let thy will be done. That is, whenever we pray and then the prayer is based on the will of God, definitely we are going to receive answer because God will want what is good for you. What is good for you is what God will do for you. What pleases God, what will promote and what will elevate uh, the, 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 will of, the wish of God is what God answers. So, brethren, I advise us this uh, day that whenever we are praying, we should be very, very conscious of the kind of prayer we pray. A lot of us have been praying all this way for so many times, and still we are still asking, and we have not received and it's not supposed to be so. The fault could be ours. So today, go and examine yourself. Go and look at yourself. We are, we, we are, I've told you this topic we are treating is uh, traveling in prayer. So that means as you are praying, your prayer has no bound. It has no end. And the Bible says when in, in verse uh, 43, verse 43, it says when Jesus Christ was praying, even in agony, he continued praying. That is, we should also continue to pray. Whatever the challenges we are having, whatever the problems we are having, we should also continue to pray. We must be praying. The problem must not stop us from praying. And also, look at it. He said, Jesus keeps praying. He keeps praying. That is, we need to be praying. Either you have received it or you have not received it. You must be praying. You must be praying. Prayer is very, very important. And non-stop prayer. Non-stop prayer. That is not that when you pray and then you relax. No, you must not be weary. You must still continue and you must still forge ahead, even until you are able to lay your hand on it. So we must pray, and our prayer must be a prayer that, uh, that, that, that it, 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 it's not a seasonal prayer. But what I'm saying is that we must continue to pray and pray and pray and pray until we receive the answer. Prayer is the master key. Don't forget, one of our sons says, Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. So that means Jesus started all through his life praying. And then until the end of his life, he didn't stop praying. So also as Christians and as followers of Christ, we must also be praying. We must not stop praying. We must, our, pray, our life must be a life of prayer. Our way must be a way of prayer. Our home must be a home of prayer. Nothing is stopping it. We must not stop. We must not cease from doing so. Nothing should stop us. Rather than we must forge ahead, we must be stronger in prayer. Stronger. When I mean what, what I mean by stronger is, we not we must not be weak. It's not a weak prayer. He said, the sweat on the Lord Jesus Christ was like blood, was coming down like blood. That means you must be strong in prayer. You must be fervent in prayer. Your prayer must be stronger. You must you to the extent that the devil will fall before you. And also, don't forget, in the, at the beginning of this uh, uh, Luke chapter 22, in verse uh, 39, he said they should pray so that they should not fall into temptation. What is this telling us? That is, as we are praying, so also we'll be very, very careful, and then the prayer will guide us so that we will not fall into temptation. Either, rather, either temptation of sin or temptation of any other thing. But the greater, greatest one is sin. So that, and you know, a life that sins and pray, should not expect, expect answer. It is a, it's a, a, a life that is godly. A godly life is the one that gets a godly answer from prayer. So if you said you are a Christian and you have a, one hand in sin, and then at the same time you are praying for good things, you, you cannot mock God. You cannot deceive, deceive God. 
It's not possible. So that, so that we must pray so that we not, we not find ourselves in temptation. It's very, very important for us. If you say we are following the master, if you say we are, we are, we are, we are, we are follower of Christ, we are his and he's, he's, he's for us. And then we want to achieve meaningful things in life. We want to reach a very higher stage in life. We want to, we want to go to a very higher level, a higher ground. We must be a prayerful person. We must be praying day and night. Every time, every moment of our life must be years and times of prayer. And we need to start praying from now and we must not stop praying till the end. That is the most important thing. And secondly, I would want us to, to understand one thing. In the book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7, he told us that we should seek and we will find. He said we should knock and the door shall be open. This is a blank check for Christians. It's a blank check for believers that a check has been given unto you. Just fill it, sign it, that knock and, and ask and you shall be given. Ask. So it is left for you to ask and it is left for me to ask. The person that will give you say you should ask. The person that will open the door say you should knock. So, and then the person that says you should, you, that, that you give, you say you should seek. So what else do we need? There's no other thing than for us to take action, to start. And then when we are starting, we must know that we are not stopping. We are not stopping. That book of Matthew really gave us an hope, very great hope, that yes, no matter how, the moment you ask, or the moment you continue to ask, you will, you will receive. It's an assurance. And this assurance is what we, as Christians, must place our heart on, that yes, I have been given an assurance, that me, oh, if I knock, oh, definitely the door shall be open for me. You must have that confidence. That is a traveling life in prayer. Secondly, we, as Christians, must be confident that if I seek, I will surely find. Find from whom? From your master. From the one you follow. And you follow in truth and in spirit. So if you seek, you will surely find. You must not be discouraged of the, of the current happenings. You must not be discouraged of what you are passing through. You must not be discouraged of what befalls you. It's a temporary thing. It will go. You have somebody who is solidly behind you and is ready to listen to you and is ready to do it all, all the time. And not that when you seek this time, you don't come back to come and seek. If you continue to seek him one million times, you continue to get him one million times. If you continue to knock one million times, you will continue to open for you one million times. So if you continue to ask over a million times, you will continue to open for you over a million times. He is there. And whatever happens, his word will always come into pass. He has said it and a minute, and we surely do it. And I pray for you and every one of you that is hearing me today that as you continue to find and continue to seek God, God will continue to answer you. But don't forget what you need doing in this, uh, in your life, is for you to make sure that you are not weak in prayer and that you are very strong in prayer. Look at uh, our program. Look at the name. The name is tagged um, When Mercy Speaks. When Mercy Speaks. That means mercy will speak for you as well. On your sick bed, mercy will speak for you. I don't want to know how many years you have been sick. Don't forget, you've seen series of uh, cases inside the Bible. The person that was sick for 38 years, at the end of the day, he has the cause to praise God. The person that has the issue of blood for 12 years also rejoices at last. So therefore, your own situation also is not bad. It's not what God cannot do. It is the most simplest thing that God will do. And I am appealing to you today that you should switch on your heart to God. You should look up unto him. And for you, joy will be your case at last. So, brethren, as we are going, and I pray with you that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God, will be with you and will be with your home, will be with your home and will be with your family in Jesus' name. Brethren, as we speak, 
and now we are going into prayer. I want you to have faith in God. And this faith is faith that, yes, today you have met God. And definitely God will do it for you. Your faith matters most. If you don't have faith in, your, in, 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 your, in the God whom you serve, if you don't have faith in the master whom you follow, there's nothing you will get. You need faith. You need absolutely faith, absolute faith. Don't forget that woman with the issue of blood. Just touch the arm of the garment of the master and he receive cleanliness. So also you, if you have faith today, your faith will lift you up. In the mighty name of Jesus, that place you are, that situation you are, that level you are is not your level. It's not your situation. You are going to come up. Definitely you will come up, but just have faith on this prayer that we are going into and the Lord will answer your prayer as well. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to pray with, along with me. Pray that God should open your way this season that the mercy of God should locate you. The mercy of God should locate you and the mercy of God should speak to your life. Continue praying. Continue praying that the mercy of God should speak to your life. By this time next year that we are going to start this program, you should come back to come and give glory to God. You should come back to come and thank God for what he will have done in your life. God will have done it. That barrenness will never be yours again in Jesus' name. You will come with your own child. Pray, pray, pray that mercy should speak to your womb. That mercy of God should speak to your life. Pray that mercy of God should speak to your business. Pray, pray, pray very well. No matter how, how the economy is, it, what you need is just the mercy of God. Pray again, pray and pray. Pray that the mercy of God should speak to your marriage. That your marriage that has been, that, that has been shaken. Pray, pray. As I'm praying with you, you should also pray. And that marriage will never fall again in Jesus' name. That problem you're having in the marriage, either money, either anything, God will take care of them. Pray, pray and pray. Then again, pray with me as well that the Lord should heal you. Your sickness is over. You are no more sick, but you are healed. I said by his stripe, you are healed. By the seven word on the cross, on the, on the cross of Calvary, you are healed. Pray, pray very well. Pray by the stripe of the, of, 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 on his body. By that drop of blood, pray that you are healed. Your home is healed. What doctors cannot do for you, pray that the Lord should do it. And he's going to do it. It is your portion. It is your right. Because you are in God and God is in you. And God will do it for you. Pray again that the Lord should open his way for you. Measure to speak to your, to your children. That your stubborn child that has not been listening to you. Pray that mercy of God should speak to his education. And he will surely come back and come and thank God. Pray, pray, pray. Mercy should speak in your way. Mercy should speak in your business. Mercy of God should speak in your idea of all. Everything concerning your life. Pray. And I'm also joining you to pray for that your, your brother, your siblings that are abroad, that are finding it difficult. Pray for them and the Lord will do it. And they will also send testimonies down here. By this time next year when you are coming for this program, that you and I will come and glorify God. And so shall it be. Pray, pray, pray and pray again. Pray those things that no man can do. No man can do. He can do it and he will do it perfectly. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are praying and we know that God is doing it. The heavens are doing it. Your heaven is open. It's open. Open to you. Don't forget that we talk about blank check in Matthew 7, 7. Yes, it's for you. Sign it in your prayer. Use your prayer to sign it. That today, your prayer is answered and those things that you have lacked, you will get them in abundance. And so shall it be, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that you should be with us. Father, come and be with us in Jesus' name. We pray that you should open ways of opportunities, doors of opportunities in our life. Daddy, come and do that in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, we pray for those that are barren, that today, by the time we are coming this time next year, you will open their womb in Jesus' name. They will have triplets, they will have twins, and so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. And for those that are looking for job opportunities, you will give them job, you do them good job, that we fetch them money, and that at the same time, all those that are working, that are not seeing results, that you will give them blessings, you put blessings in their way, and mercy will speak in their case. Mercy will speak on their home, mercy will speak in their life, and then on their body, those that are sick, mercy of God will speak, and so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you very much, and God bless you. By this time next year, when we meet, we shall have the cause to glorify God. Amen.
Yeki o le ofe Jesus Christ o luwa wa ifa mi mo ti Olorun idapo ti e mi mi mo ko pa laya ti okan mo ko soju re ko mo le si wa lara ko ma ba wa gbe lati si yi lo ati titi lai lai amen